Because of the serious consequences of having water in the fuel, fuel sampling is encouraged um, you know, at a minimum of every day and maybe before every flight. So to take a fuel sample, you would need a fuel sampling jar and you will take it from a, a fuel sampling outlet on, in the fuel tank. So this outlet is at the bottom of the tank because if there had been any water in the, in the fuel, any free water, it will accumulate at the bottom of the tank so that when we take our sample, that water will, will be in our sample. So before the first flight of the day, uh, the fuel sampling jar will be brought to the fuel tank. It will depress the valve here and that will allow fuel to drain into the uh, fuel sampling jar. If any water had been present in the fuel, it would now be in the fuel sampling jar. So once the sample is taken, the um, sample jar is, is removed and we then do a visual inspection. So just looking through the, the jar, you know, if there is any free water, you would see it at the bottom of the tank or the sample jar, I should say. And you look looking through and you're looking for maybe little droplets, or little cloudy portions in the fuel, and that would indicate in, in trained water. Any sign of water would mean that the fuel would have to be disposed of, uh, environmentally, of course. Uh, and then you take another sample and you keep on taking the samples until there is no fuel or no water left in the um, in the fuel tank. If there was no visual indication of water in the fuel, you can then uh, do another test where you could get a syringe and a water detection capsule. So you put the te detection capsule onto the syringe and then put the syringe and the capsule into the sample jar. You, you mix it around and then you draw the fuel through the capsule into the syringe. If, if there was any uh, water in the fuel, there will be a discoloration on the on the capsule, maybe dark blue. And if there was no water in the fuel, there would be no uh, discoloration. So when you look into this capsule, uh, hopefully this is what you would see. Another alternative would be to get a hydrometer. So a hydrometer measures the specific gravity. So you can measure the specific gravity of the fuel. And for Jet A1, it should be somewhere between 0.76 and uh, point A2. As long as the fuel was within those ranges, then it, it will, would be acceptable. Okay, so that's, uh, that is fuel sampling. And um, in, in this case, I've been talking about sampling for water, but you would also, when you're, when you're checking the fuel, you would check for uh, other forms of debris, maybe dirt or, 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 or so on. Um, a good way to check that is to, to spin your sample jar around so that the fuel swirls around and if there was any bits of debris, the centrifugal force would push them out and you, you, it becomes uh, easier to see. Okay, so that's fuel sampling. It should be done at least every day and, and probably before every flight.